Hello, I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor. And part of the work that I do is a podcast called Emotional Savvy. And it's important for us to have emotional savvy. And you know that I talk a lot about toxic people, relationships with toxic people, whether that's our partner, an ex, a parent, a coworker, a friend. These people are having a negative effect on our bodies. It's not in our heads. <laughs> it really is happening in our bodies. And I wanted to talk to you today about those things. I want to make them real and validate them for you. Chronic stress is a big problem. Chronic anxiety is a big problem. And we really need to be thinking about these things because when you're with a hijackal, one of those toxic, difficult, and often disturbing people that I talk about, you are going to be under chronic stress and may well have chronic anxiety, or at least you're going to have some fear or what we call hypervigilance. You're always looking over your shoulder, always wondering what's coming next. What do I need to be aware of? What do I need to be prepared for? And that causes chronic stress for sure. So it's very important for us to think about the effects of this. And I want to give you some scientific information because it's not just an idea. It's not just me saying this. It really is some scientific validity behind all of this. It may be happening to you. It may have happened to you. And there is healing that can occur. You really can heal. You'll need some help. That's what I do in the world. I have clients all over the world that I help through video conferencing. But help is available and you can heal. So I just want to give you some parameters about this, how it actually works. Um, when you're under chronic stress and you're under some fear, some anxiety, some concern all the time, some, some really low-level stuff that's going on every minute of every day, looking over your shoulder, being concerned. Maybe your shoulders are making their way up to your earlobes by the end of the day. And when you do that over time, certain things happen in your brain. And I want to talk about two of them. This chronic stress and anxiety will cause an important part of your brain that is connected to short-term memory to shrink. This part of your brain is called the hippocampus. And when that shrinks, you know that feeling like you can't quite grasp something? If somebody's telling you all the steps and you don't really feel like you got it, or you begin to feel that you're losing your mind, that you're forgetting things and important things slip by, and then the hijackal tells you that you really are not as maybe worthwhile or as bright as you really are. Yeah, when that happens, if you've been under this chronic stress and tension, and you have fear in your life most of the time, the body releases a chemical, a hormone called cortisol. And this is engaged with both the hippocampus and with the amygdala, which is the other part of the brain that we're going to talk about today. So I just want to validate for you, you know, this is happening to you because you are with a hijackal, a relentlessly difficult, toxic person or you were raised by one. And the good news is that you can change all this. It's up to you. I know it's not easy. I'm not making it out to be easy. I don't want you to think that I don't understand. I've been with one. I know what it took to get myself and my children away. I know all of that. So it's I don't make light of that at all. But I want you to understand what's happening to your brain because you don't want to feel less than, less than the capacity that you had before. You don't want to be forgetting things. And when your hippocampus shrinks, that can happen. So stress causes the production of cortisol. And this decreases the volume of the hippocampus. That's what makes it sh shrink. So it's very important to get away from the chronic stress. Now, you know that I always say, when you're in that situation with a hijackal, you want to do your own work first. You know, find out who you are, what you want, how you can respond differently to it. Get your strength back, your confidence back, some sense of self-esteem and self-empowerment. 
so that you can deal with it. And that means beginning to take back what it is you need to do to not feel this chronic stress and anxiety. I'm going to give you some ideas for that. Now, the other piece that I was talking about, the amygdala, this is the reptilian brain. This is the piece that keeps us surviving. This is the piece that responds to fear and to hate and really strong emotions. And, and it, it affects your heart rate and your breathing, right? You know what I'm talking about. It affects your heart rate and your breathing. So this little triangle of the hormone cortisol and how it affects the hippocampus and the amygdala are very important for you to know. Yeah, maybe you don't need to know the science, but you need to know that when you have been with one, you know, I was raised by a hijackal mother. I don't know a moment when I didn't have it until I, I left and married and left to hijackal and eventually learned that uh uh that's not gonna happen in my life no 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 you're not going to shrink my hippocampus and and render my amygdala into some form that is completely hyper vigilant anymore and you know that amygdala is the fight or flight place and what happens to it as the hippocampus diminishes what happens to the amygdala is that it it becomes enlarged and when you're stressed you do some things to protect yourself and you may be familiar with these you go into denial you pretend it's not really happening or you pretend it's not really so bad familiar well sure that's protective that's what you're you're trying to do you're trying to protect yourself and then you justify any little moment when the hijackal was good or any good qualities the hijackal has and you diminish what it is that's causing you the stress and the anxiety. So you start pressing that down and, and then you develop what I call a selective focus. You know, you, you ignore the abuse and you talk about, oh, I remember one time when we were on vacation and how wonderful it is. Now I had a client once who came into my office. I'd been seeing her for a couple of months and she had a big red mark across her face. And here's an example of what I've been talking to you about. And I said to her, what happened? She said, he hit me with a, with a hairbrush. I said, oh, but she said, oh, but I know he loves me. I know he loves me. I said, how do you know that? She said, well, three weeks ago, we had a big blowout. And then he came and told me he loved me and he brought me flowers. You see, went way in the past to justify that she was loved. And yet here was the evidence on her face that she was being abused. So when I said to her, well, what would this be then? Would that be a love tap? And she just dissolved because, of course, she recognized that she was in denial and that she was justifying the good moments in her life and trying to hold on to those when really she'd been hurt way too many times. So the good news is that you can you can get your hippocampus functioning again and you can reduce the size of your amygdala. But here's what you have to do. First of all, you've got to start doing things that cause you to have quiet. Meditate. Visualize on good things. Spend time in the silence. Spend time in nature and allow your shoulders to come back down from your earlobes and actually have some time. Take a yoga class. Learn to meditate. Find really supportive friends that just love you and support you. Not that you have to be talking about how awful it is with your hijackal. No, find interests. Find things that support you and, and that you're, you're keen about and you have some passion for and do that. And yes, I know fi finances may be that the hijackal is controlling them and doesn't want you to do all those things. But you'll find a way because you matter and you must treat yourself as though you matter you must take that time you know when i was a young mom with three children and i was on my own with them i had a sign that i put on my bathroom door and it said i would go in and have a bath that was we had one bathroom and that was the only place that i could go i had an, almost no money certainly no disposable income and i had a sign on the door that said only knock if you're bleeding <laughs> <laughs> because I had to do something to have that peace. Working full time, being a single mom, doing a PhD, three kids, not enough income. Yeah, a lot of stress 
and I had left enormous stress. So it's important for us to understand that you can turn this around and you can find little ways to catch your breath and release that. And yes, there are therapeutic things that you could do too. And we could certainly talk about that. But I want you to understand that this foggy mind and all the things that are happening, this creeping shoulders and anxiety and concern and hypervigilance, not knowing what's coming, all of those things are hurting your brain. And you deserve better. You always have deserved better because you matter. So I'm just sharing these things with you today because I want you to know that you matter. I want you to treat yourself knowing that you matter and that you will, in fact, do some things to reduce the chronic stress, to reduce the anxiety, to reduce the overwhelm. And you will get help when you need it. You will reach out and find it. I'm always here for you. Go and visit forrelationshiphelp.com. If these things are making sense to you and you know that that all of a sudden you realize I am actually damaging my brain. I am not willing to let any situation do that. I matter. I deserve better. And I know you do. Talk soon.